every citizen of Coleman. We ask this through the greatest gift you've given us, your Son and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Before we get started, there's a couple of things that I want to mention to you that, uh, first of all, this mayor and this council, I don't know how they voted, and they don't know how I voted. We stayed out of this election. We didn't try to influence any newspapers or any developers or anything that people may be saying about us. It is totally not true. This petition was started way before the developers ever came to this community, and we, get, we have that on record. And we don't want to do anything that will make our community not get along. We want to strive because we all live in the same community. We want to strive to work together, and we want your input to see how we can keep Coleman the way it is now. And we are elected officials, and it's our responsibilities to make sure that we live in a democracy. Last week, we celebrated Veterans Day. And one of the greatest things that veterans gave us was the right to vote. And we exercised that vote last week. I mean, excuse me, on November the 2nd. And now then it's our responsibility to carry out the wishes of the people. So I want to, I want to bring you up. We have uh, an agenda back there if you didn't get one. But I want to show you something about how we got to where we are tonight. And this is a little timeline that you can see right here. This was a uh, petition was brought to us by a group that wanted to see alcoholic beverages sold in the city limits. We received that petition on the 27th, and then on the 29th it was verified, and on October the 10th uh, an election was established to be held on November the 2nd. I think that you can see that how we got to where we are and where this council is going is to put the best ordinance in place that we can possibly put into place. But let me remind you of this. There are certain things that we cannot discriminate against. Every ordinance that we pass must withstand legal scrutiny. So understand that. We can't say, well, you can sell it at a package store, but you can't sell it at a grocery store. So that just opens things up. So there are certain things that, that we have to do. And uh, on no, let's say the ABC board contacted me on November the 4th and they wanted to meet with us. They were the enforcement agents and they just had some laws that they wanted us to be aware of. And so they met with us on the, was that on the 8th? Yeah, we had a council meeting on the 8th. And so those officers came and met with us. And so tonight we're having our first public meeting and also tomorrow we're having one at noon, and let me explain why we're having one at night and one in day. There's some people that can't get out at, at night, and so we open that up for those people that cannot get out at night, that prefer to get out in the day where they can be able to be here. And so this kind of puts, puts us where we are, and so at this time, I'm going to turn it over to our council president, Mr. Garland Gudger, and uh, his comments. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first of all, we're blessed to have a, such a good community, and the reason we have such a good community is people like yourself are, is here tonight that want to make a difference in the lives of all of us in this community in the future. So bottom line, thank you for coming tonight. This council and this mayor has, very, has been diligently researching individually and together since the wet-dry vote on November 2nd. As we have gotten into this, we have learned through state law is more complicated and detailed than any of us had thought previously. There are a lot of issues that are going to affect everyone in this room, and the reason that we're having this, of course, is because we want to hear your input. We cannot say, of course, that we're experts in this field. We want to hear your input. We want to know what knowledge you have and experiences you have. There's a large crowd here tonight, and so how we're going to somewhat operate this forum tonight is that if you do have something, our chief of police, Kenny Culpepper, will walk around the room. He will give you the microphone. He'll be timing. You have three minutes to state anything you would like to. Just for the sake of how many people we have in this room, you're only going to be able to, to be allowed to speak one time. I wish it could be more, but it can't be tonight. From that, also, if you would respect the fact if someone else has already made the point that you're going to say, please don't get up and reiterate that point people here and a lot of points that need to be heard, especially from the council. 
We want this piece of legislation to be passed to be the best legislation possible for this community. We have children here, just like Clint. We have the rest of our lives are going to be spent here. We work here. We play here. We live here, of course. We want this community to be as safe as possible, and we want it to be the best community possible and to keep Coleman as vibrant as it is right now. So we have the same assumptions, I believe, down deep as everyone in this room, as that we want Coleman to be the best it can be. So together we can do that, but that's why we ask for your input, and we appreciate you being here tonight. But please respect everyone else's time tonight. So again, one time to speak if you do would like to speak something, and then also three minutes. And if uh, Chief Culpepper taps you, then that's, it's time to pass the microphone. But we're here to listen, and if we are not focusing on you the whole time, it's probably because we're taking notes. We have already talked, like I said, but we have not drafted a skeleton of this ordinance. And that's why we're here tonight. If we can get this microphone, are we good? But we do want to hear your input, so let's get started. Who'd like to be first? Before we get started, I want to say one more thing. As far as this council goes, this needs to be a forum. If you ask us questions, we might, know, we might not know the answer at this point. Again, we have only talked about this individually. We have not drafted the skeleton of this order. So if you ask us a question and we don't know, please. Don't be upset, we don't know. But that's why we're here tonight, okay? So please, who would like to go first? Thank you very much. Can everyone hear me? Yes, sir. All right. My name is Leon Moore. I live inside the city limits of uh, Carl. Hold on one second. Wait. Name and address. All right. In a city council meeting, we usually will come up and we'll state your name and your address. If you get the microphone, please do that also for the record. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Leon Moore. I live at 906 First Avenue Southeast. I've been living in Coburn about five years. Uh, moved up here from Birmingham, Alabama. My father was a policeman for some 37 years in Birmingham. After returning from service, I uh, uh, worked as a deputy sheriff for about a year and a half in Birmingham as a warden at the county jail. I've had to lock up my friends. I've had to uh, lock up my neighbors, customers on my old paper routes, etc. And my, my purpose is being here is just to bring up some issues that maybe haven't been discussed before. Uh, one has to do with the possession of alcohol by, minor, by a minor. Uh, how strict is that going to be enforced? I got some very good feedback from uh, people associated with the police department, and they say that whenever they find a minor with an open can, can of beer or something, it's well handled. So possession, that means in a car, in their hands, what have you. The other thing is that uh, I know from living in Birmingham from time to time, uh, minors will hang around a spot where beer is sold. When they see one of their older friends come by, they will proposition that man to go in and buy their beer for them. So I think there ought to be a misdemeanor uh, thing about a minor soliciting beer to be purchased for them. Likewise, the person that goes in and buys the beer ought to be severely uh, punished. So that would be two things. Uh, the, the use of fake and false ID cards I think ought to be uh, well addressed, even to the extent of maybe even videotaping the, 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 that activity or scanning the ID cards in so they could be uh, referenced in the future. The other, the, my other, I have a question. Is the ordinance going to be available for public comment uh, after it is a uh, skeleton out, as you said, I'm familiar with that word, and then available for public comment at some later date? Uh, also, I had a thought that maybe it would be possible to encourage some kind of education program uh, through the school systems as, as this thing gets started. Because a lot of kids have lived elsewhere, the ordinance may not be severely enforced, so is it possible to, I don't know if it'd be an ordinance, but a program to get a summary of the major parts of the ordinance out to the schools, particularly early on. Uh, I think that would be the thoughts that I had for you. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate 